Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Saya. Welcome if you are new here. Um, today I'm going to be drawing my very first speed painting. Um, I wanted to do one of an e-girl or a soft girl. I'm not really sure what to call them. They kind of look similar to me. Um, but anyway, so first I'm starting out just doing a very soft, simple sketch of how I want the character to look. And I'm actually using a reference photo of a girl that I found online. So whoever this is, thank you for uploading your picture to the internet. <laughs> I know this seems kind of creepy, but anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, it doesn't look exactly like the picture I found online, but I thought it was cute. I wanted somewhat of a full body or half body photo. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. And... I'm not um, creating her outfit or her look to look exactly similar as the reference photo, but um, I think that her pose is perfect and she was holding a cat. Who doesn't like cats? Like, I love cats and I always kind of make my, my cats whenever I'm drawing them to look similar to my own actual cat. <laughs> so... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this, um, it's not a tutorial, but this speed paint. Um, I'm going to kind of show you guys at the end how this digital art piece can come to life. So I guess if you wanted to, you could call it a tutorial or how to um, create a moving animated GIF or animated uh, video of your character by simply just blinking her eyes so yeah right here I am just trying to line up the eyes and sketch the the eyelashes out I do struggle with this a little bit so please bear with me this video is going to be quite long so yeah so I am going to talk um a little bit while I am sketching out this piece so it doesn't get a little awkward of you guys just watching me draw but yeah so I've been drawing um, on and off since I was about six years old and I've always wanted to do something with my art besides just selling it in real life. Uh, I do paint on the side. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that I am that good at painting but I do use it as therapy and I've had a drawing tablet for the past four, maybe five uh, years literally just collecting dust in my room and it was because I didn't know how to set it up so I've always had my laptop and my drawing tablet. I am using a um, Wacom tablet, Wacom, Wacom, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that but yeah I use a Wacom tablet so it is a little harder to use um, just because I wanted to switch over to my PC instead of using my Mac and uh, for some reason I can't seem to get my tablet to work on my computer um, so I'm just if it seems like it's a little laggy or slow or it's glitching a little bit when I'm drawing um, please forgive me I'm trying to afford a new computer and a new tablet but money is tight right now for me so I won't be able to do that um, at this moment but that is something that I'm saving up for so I am excited about that and maybe whenever that happens I can share what I've got with you guys here on YouTube but yeah so I never really knew what I wanted to do with my art other than creating it and sharing it with friends um, but then I knew that I always wanted to do my own animated series or cartoon. I just didn't know how to start. Um, so why not start off doing it for YouTube or at least uh, showing people, since I already show people how I create my art, why not show it on YouTube? So yeah. But yeah, so speaking of uh, creating art and sharing it with friends, I used to post a lot of my art on my Instagram, but then I came across this problem where I would have random people that I guess they knew of me, like we lived in the same city, um, they would follow me and I would post like a, a finished painting 
on my Instagram and I would have other people, girls taking my work and, you know, uh, sharing it, which is fine. I never think it's wrong to share an artist's work as long, as long as you at least, um, you know, give credit where it's due. I think that it's great that people admire my art. Um, not that I think it's that great. <laughs> uh, I definitely do create some really amazing pieces. I can recognize that, but then I feel like on a bad day, I can just keep creating something that looks nothing like my art, and I feel like my skills go down um, when I'm not practicing. But yeah, so I stopped posting my art on Instagram because um, I was getting a lot of theft on there, and people were just taking my art and just claiming it as their own and you know of course I'm a little bold I'll say something to you you know if if you're doing this um but I just felt like I wasn't really getting much out of it um people weren't really at least telling me that oh like I love your art not that I really need them to say that but if you're going to post something that doesn't belong to you, why not just show appreciation for that person's artwork, especially if they're a smaller artist. Um, so yeah, it, it bummed me out a little bit and I don't really know how Instagram's algorithm works. I feel like there's so many artists out there and it's hard to find um other artists like you can find artists all day but it's hard to be seen as an artist on Instagram because there's so many people that are creating art or just use, using um, the hashtags that are related to digital art or just art in general and it could be totally unrelated so I, I don't know it's kind of spammy to me so yeah I felt like it would just be better for me to at least if I'm going to be creating to just share what I'm doing on my YouTube channel and this is why I'm starting out with doing my animations on here and I hope that they're somewhat interesting or you know engage um certain people because that would make me happy to see other people actually enjoying my art and discussing it and giving tips and you know just sharing advice on here and at the same time I can talk about things that I like to talk about uh, on my YouTube channel at the same time if I wanted to instead of just making um, videos filming myself talking to the camera I feel like it's a little more productive to practice doing my art and recording it and sharing it online. Okay, so I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but yeah, I went ahead and started doing the base color and uh, filling in some of her cheeks because I'm trying to give her this very blushy, e-girl, soft girl, Lee look. And I think that I'm doing sort of well with it so far. I mean, it looks a little sloppy starting off, um, but I am the type to build in layers. So just because it may look like one thing in the beginning, it may look completely different by the time I'm finished with the piece uh, that I'm doing. I will add um, different shades of colors, maybe in her hair. Um, I'm using like a, a burnt orange and then I go to like a darker burnt orange and I'm outlining her hair and adding some just some lines to make it look a little more natural. Uh, I'm not that good at drawing hair but I've been doing it long enough to say that it looks somewhat decent. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you guys would like to see a hair tutorial on how I usually do my hair on my characters, then please let me know in the comments and I would love to do that for you guys because I, I do it anyway, so why not? I wanted to show you guys how I like to put together my 
hairstyles, all the different hairstyles that I have. It's seriously, it's endless. Like there's so many different hairstyles out there, so many different textures from straight to curly to wavy to kinky. Like there's so much to play around with. And I think that's the best part about digital art or like character creation, character design. Um, is that you it's you can literally create anything you can if you want it to do a really big afro then you could do that you know you can you don't have to stick to one standard way of how art should look or how a character should look because everyone in the world looks different and there's so much different shapes and sizes and textures and it's endless but yeah so right now I'm just going in and doing some outlines some small details in the shirt I'm not going to make this um, piece super detailed uh, so it may look a little sketchy and blocky and just um, lots of lines unnecessary lines um, but that's only because I don't want to spend too much time on this video uh, I might get a little distracted or thrown off and it could take too long like just recording these videos take um, up to a few hours and then editing the, editing the video takes even longer um, the process is just uh, it's not dreadful but <laughs> it, you have to really focus on what you're doing while you're doing it and hope that you know you don't miss any mistakes so if I look like I'm rushing it then I, I, I probably am rushing it I'm gonna at least try to do a little bit of shading and just to give it some some dimension to it is that the right word <laughs> I'm not even sure but yeah uh what's next so you can see right here it's starting to come to life a little bit the details uh, that I'm doing on her face um, I'm trying to add a little more blush I'm trying to give her like a really rosy peachy pink color on her face because uh, I feel like it's not it's not an e-girl or a soft girl if she doesn't have the blush like I feel like that's really important in this step like if you put it on the nose or a bunch on the cheeks then I feel like and at least like a dark eye or like lashes like um some very girly pretty eyes like I feel like that's what makes the look of an e-girl besides the hairstyle um and I probably already mentioned that. Oh no, that was in my other video. I did like an e-girl look. I attempted to do an e-girl look and I completely failed at it. Like it didn't come out the way that I wanted to. But I think, you know, there's enough videos out there in the world for people to see what an e-girl looks like. There's like endless tutorials on how to look like an e-girl or a soft girl. So don't let me try to take the spotlight because... I, I'm not taking it anyway anyway so <laughs> but yeah so small details are really important when doing digital art or just paintings art in general uh, right now I'm adding like highlight to her lips to give it like a more powdier look it makes it look a little more real not exactly you know human real life real but it does make it look a little more almost 3D without actually doing 3D um, rendering. Looking at it from afar actually looks pretty good. I'm liking the way it's turning out. I still have to go in and add details in with the cat. Right now I'm just playing around with like um, just the lines to see like what it looks like without the the sketch lines on it if I want to go in and erase some parts instead of just deleting the whole um, entire layer I like to see if I can use whatever layer that is and just alter it a little bit but yeah I end up deleting the lines anyway after I went in and added some of the details on her necklace uh, the chains and then I moved on to the next thing. 
which is still adding lots of small little details going in and adding some shading underneath her neck, um, the shadows. Um, I didn't really know where I wanted the light to hit. I have that problem where um, the light could be hitting like, for instance, the highlight on her nose. I would say that the sun would be coming from her right side or her left, the side where her cat's, uh, where she's holding her cat at. The lighting would be coming from that side. Um, but I have the issue where I will add shadows in places where they don't belong. Um, it's a horrible habit. It's just when I'm not really paying attention, I'm not aware of what I'm doing. So if you see me doing that, don't laugh at me, don't make fun of me. I mean, point it out for sure, but because <laughs> uh, I, should, I should be more um, aware of what I'm doing when I'm drawing because I want to take my time, but sometimes if I am in a rush or my computer is acting slow, laggy, I will tend to just speed through things without actually being aware of what it is that I'm doing in the first place. But yeah, so I'm going to just speed this video up just a little bit more so that I can move on to the next um, step right now these are just I'm just doing small details like prepping the eyes up a little bit making them look a little more brighter and um, cleaning up some of the outlines maybe changing her hair a little bit just like fixing it you know small things so I'm gonna speed this video up don't let me talk too much just enjoy some soothing Animal Crossing music instead of listening to me talk your brains out Okay, so you're probably not wondering why I'm drawing all over her eyeball. So I wanted to point out that I created a completely new layer and I'm painting over her eyes because now I'm going into the animation process. If you look down at the bottom, you will see this frame. It's in the color red. I created a new frame and this is how I do my blinking process. And I'm using the... Um, what is it called, Krita uh, program to do my animations in because it's free. Uh, so I create a new layer right there at the bottom and I'm basically painting over her eyes and then I go in and I will create a completely new layer and in each layer it looks like I'm basically making her eyes lower and lower so that I can create the effect of the blinking. And it's really simple, really easy. Um, it's pretty much like common sense of like how blinking looks if you were to look at someone when they blink. Slowly their eyes shut. I mean, but it's, in, it's going so fast it's hard to see it. But it's pretty much the same way when you're doing animation. You're just watching someone move. Um, frame by frame so each frame is like the next movement and that's exactly what I'm doing with her eyes as you can see she's opening and closing them and it looks pretty natural and then I will um, go ahead and do the same thing with her mouth and her eye roll that's what I'm doing right here I am Basically making it appear that she's rolling her eyes by looking in the upward like direction And then I create another frame and I will erase the eye completely So it looks like her eyes rolled to the back of her head. I mean, yeah, it looks pretty creepy, but I Notice this is something um, E-girls do in their videos like they roll their eyes or whatever and they stick out their tongue or maybe that's just uh, Bella Dauphine or whatever her name is I'm not sure but uh, yeah so it's really easy it's really simple I use the the selection tool to 
basically like trace the upper parts of her eyes and drag them down and then I create a new layer underneath the body layer, the, the entire body face layer and I color in um, with her skin color underneath un under the eyes so it looks like she still has skin on her face when I drag the eyes down and then I repeat the same process as I did when creating the eyes to make it seem like she's like blinking her eyes and I add as many frames as I want to to make it look a little more natural or to make her blink more you know blink longer and then I do pretty much the same thing with the mouth. Uh, I draw a tongue and then I make it longer and shorter. Gave her some teeth to make it look not like she's got her teeth punched out or turned into an old person. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so... It's really simple. I don't really know how else to explain this because it's one of the easiest things or maybe one of the first things any animator will do is maybe draw a ball or animate some eyes and yeah I think it's super cute I think that when people forget to animate eyes blinking it can look a little unnatural in um, shows or animated videos I've watched on YouTube um, so I think it's important that you occasionally have your characters blinking in your animation so that it looks a little more natural yeah mm-hmm yeah, so this is uh, what I was talking about earlier with all the different frames and I'm just letting them play and I'm adding more frames to see how many I want to do in between or if I want to bring them closer so they can move faster or slower and just touching it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, um, I think I, I, I like how this turned out. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much done. I hope that this video was somewhat useful or you learned something from it or at least enjoy this uh, content. I will be making more videos like this, so if you have any um, suggestions for me, please let me know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you guys again. See ya!